Okay. I'm ready. Okay, so uh, I'm talking tonight about uh, sujiban and thermally treated wood. And there are two different methods of uh, creating wood with a low maintenance finish, or at least the, that's the theory. And I'm interested in low maintenance wood because I work for Ontario Parks, which we're going to roll to the next slide. And let me talk about Ontario Parks. Ontario Parks, quick overview. We're one-tenth the land mass of Ontario. It's the size of Nova Scotia is how much land we have when we have Ontario parks. 321 out of 113 are, are uh, operating parks, which means there's campers in them. And uh, we are a very broad and busy organization. And we have a lot of stuff to look after. We have about 460 comfort stations, 250 maintenance buildings. This, we build them so that they can take a mortar shell. So as you can see, they're nice, solid buildings. And they have to be because they, have, they don't get a lot of money to maintain them after they get built. And they have to be able to sustain these guys. And this actually happens. You have to design buildings that can withstand porcupines. And so what I'm looking for is low maintenance materials that can take the challenge of um, guys like this showing up and trying to eat it. So, so what is a sho sujiban? Okay, so sujiban, sho sujiban, you can't say that more than once or twice fast, is a burnt wood. It's just as simple as that. And the uh, char the exterior, and the idea is that you'll get, it'll, it'll, um, it's fireproof and it's resistant to uh, critters like small bugs eating it. And uh, I'm interested in this. Well, first, where did it come from? Uh, there was a Dwell article in May of 2009 about this process, a Japanese architect, uh, architect um, Fujimori, uh, introduced this material uh, back into um, uh, Japanese architecture. It was a traditional material used there. And um, what you, the way it's created is in the traditional styles you see here is they make these little chimneys out of three pieces of wire. They shove some paper up it, and they set it alight. And um, the beauty of this is that you're not having to torch this. this is you know, basically providing its own energy to create the effect. So you let it run for about five to seven minutes. And then uh, when you've got enough char on it, like this, and that's about five or seven minutes, because I've done this myself. Now, if you live in North America, you're not happy with that. You've got to stick a propane torch on it and burn that wood, get her done, because you can't wait the five minutes it takes. And now you're using propane Whereas before you just had some paper. So is that one going to work? No, it's not. Yep, here we go. No. Anyway, I had a nice little videos of this showing us actually torching uh, the, uh, the, my, basically the battens from my uh, vertical board and batten. Uh, because I actually wanted to try this system on uh, one of our small buildings. And it took an awful lot of convincing for the uh, park superintendent to put burnt wood on his building. Um, because, um, you know, he was worrying about it falling off, etc. So um, we managed to do that, and uh, this is the sort of effect we got. And you should, I draw your attention to the battens and how they look. And my point is I'm going to be making out of this is when you torch it with a propane torch, as opposed to charring it using the chimney method, you get different effects. And I think that the results and the final results are going to be, um, well, I'll show you in a moment. This is what it looked like when we got done. This is a, basically a little pump house and uh, just you know black and galvanized metal for the flashings and whatnot, battens. Uh, Eastern white cedar <coughs> was what I used, locally sourced. And um, this is two years later. And now you can, if you look at my battens, you see something's happening. I think the charring produces a better effect than the one when you torch it. And because you get a deeper char, I think it gives you that 70 to 80 year effect that they're talking about with regards to it being able to withstand um, the, uh, the wear and tear. I'm also interested in thermo wood. Thermo wood is a, um, a finished product um, where they take, basically it's kiln wood, and they take it up to a high temperature. I'm gonna show you that. And this is it, it, just, it looks a little, um, where's my sample? It's darker wood, and when you smell it, it smells like old house, old roof boards. It, because what's happened is you've taken it and you put it into a kiln, you've elevated it to a high temperature, about 400 degrees, I think Fahrenheit, 
and under control process, it doesn't burst into flames. And then they cool it down again with, uh, with, more, with, water, with water sprays. And um, at the end, you wind up with, they say, theoretically, this wood can last many, many years untreated. That's it without any treatment, and four years later, it grays out. That, now, why I want to do this is because I have a location, very difficult one, uh, in Algonquin Park where I can't get at or I don't want to be going back and repainting a siding, and it's this place. And that thing has got issues. The whole south face is rotting away. They built this thing without a rain screen behind it. Now, normally you put wood, you've got a space behind it so it breathes. They did not do this. And if you see the next shot, you'll see what happens. Like, I can pull that stuff off with my fingers. Like, that's my problem. So rather than put metal on or cementitious board or something else, which is not very parks friendly, doesn't kind of project the image, and certainly as part of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forests, does not exactly promote wood, I am experimenting with the thermal wood, which actually I believe this is a red pine that comes out of uh, the Algonquin Forest, gets shipped to Quebec, gets heat treated, and it'll be shipped back again and put on our building. So I'm introducing a detail where we're reintroducing, or at least introducing for the first time, an air screen or a rain screen behind it so that we can hopefully not have a failure on this thing. And hopefully it'll be there for, uh, well, I'm hoping I don't have to paint this. I'm just going to let it gray out. And we're going to see what happens. And theoretically, we'll get, they're suggesting 30 years like that or more. Um, in my heart, I would have liked to have used the burnt wood on this one. But uh, there, wasn't the, uh, the, there wasn't the courage in the, uh, the people to go that route. So this is my best solution. So two different types of methods of treating wood. Hopefully there'll be, uh, we'll see how they prove out to how low maintenance they are in the long run. That's it. Um, okay. Okay.